cool yeah that's recording now all right so uh as long would you like to introduce yourself first of all yeah, thanks for having me, Hamza. Uh, so my name is Azan, Azan Ahmed. Uh, I'm an actor and a poet. Yeah. What, uh, what, do I need to say some other stuff? Um, so what I've, maybe what a little bit to? about how we met, how we know each other. Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. Um, so Hamza and I went to university together. We studied at Royal Holloway uh, for our undergraduate degrees. And we worked on a few projects together. Uh, one of them where we co-directed a movement piece and then we also facilitated a panel discussion about BAME representation within the arts and then yeah since then I've been able to uh, start off kicking off an acting career I've worked at the Almeida Theatre and uh, I was rehearsing a play at the National just before coronavirus hit. What's happening with that now? Is that being crossed it will be it will be coming back next year um yeah. they think they're really keen to do it around like i don't even know if i should be saying this but um, like end of summer <laughs> or some time right okay so hopefully nice. crossed, yeah yeah sounds good okay we'll get straight into it so um yes yeah, so the reason you're on and the reason i asked you to be on is because um, I knew you as a person, not just as an actor, obviously. Uh, I know a lot about, about you. I know you are a spiritual and I'd say religious person as well. That's fair to say. Um, and we've had a lot of discussions about this and, you know, we've had talks and things. Um, and obviously you're an actor as well. And the stuff I'm looking at right now is about spirituality um, and actor movement and how they might link to each other and how one might assist the other. Um, and in the wider kind of scheme of things, I'm comparing that to um, looking at the body as just a machine and the body as something that's not inherently spiritual and what that means for actor movement. Um, so yeah, first question is, what's your relationship to prayer? So my relationship to prayer, I guess, is uh, like I do it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Muslim. Uh, I'd say I'm practicing. And yeah, I try to pray five times a day. I don't often get to four or five. Um, but yeah, I, I try and make it a thing to pray. Uh, the world in the Islamic way uh, so we call it Salah and yeah I do that and then they you know the prayer is like multifaceted so there's the actual action of of doing it um, and then at the end there's a bit called the dua which is like a, a specific personal prayer uh, like a you know specific com personal conversation between you and, and God um, and then there's you know, I've got these prayer beads, we call them dusby, and that's another act of prayer. And all three of those things are sort of engaged with when I, uh, when it's time to pray. So all three of those things I do on a fairly regular basis. And um, has your relationship to prayer changed throughout your life? Yeah, it, I don't know, it's, it goes up and down, you know. Um, mm. I'm trying to make it go up more and, and, and be steadily increasing. But I, I wasn't, like, my relation, in terms of how I got introduced to it and stuff, it wasn't through, like, an Islamic school or anything like that. It was uh, through my mum and then my grandma, um, my mum's mum. Mom. She wanted to teach us, you know, prayer and Quran and all that sort of stuff. Um, and there have been various, like when I started pre-puberty, I was on it, <laughs> absolutely on it, smashing it five times a day, all that stuff. And then puberty hits and adolescence hits and then you kind of fall out of step with it. Um, and then, not to make it too long, but when we were at uni, 
it wasn't until I think third year where I started properly praying again. Um, I think being sometimes being in an environment where you're one of the only Muslims you know, it's it's easy to forget that. But if, so to get if, to forget prayer. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Like I had a similar thing at uni where I didn't, I wasn't praying at uni really much at all until the third year when I met you, <laughs> and then we'd go together um, yeah. to pray, which was really nice. Um. So, how do you when you're praying? Mm-hmm. What's going through your head? So, oh, I should clarify as well. If we use the word prayer, you say sal- you say uh, salah, salat, or salat. Yeah. And then namaz, it's all the same thing. Like, because I, yeah. I actually call it namaz because that's, I think, like the Persian, it's like a Persian influence into Pakistan, which is my heritage, which yeah. is why there's all this like terminology differences. But um, namaz, salat, prayer. Yeah. I, I, on, I, I actually say namaz more than I say salah. So we can just oh, do yeah, namaz. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, how does it feel to pray? When I do namaz, man, it's like, I don't know, it, it's, I only recently, and we can touch on this later as well, I recently started doing meditation, um, and namaz feels very much similar, or rather, meditation feels similar to namaz, um, in the sense that, uh, <laughs> it's weird, it's actually an acting quote, but when I do namaz, it's like I'm in public solitude. Um, that's a Meisner quote. But yeah, especially if it's like, you know, collective solitude. If, if I'm in a mosque, where you're praying with other people, um, which I obviously haven't been able to do in a few months. But you, most of the time I pray um, by myself. And how does it feel? It... <sighs> It feels a number of things. I think when you you start, it, it feels like okay. How can I? So the word, the words I would use to describe different parts of Namaz would be like tranquil, transcendent, um, and what's the? There's a word when you're like when you've completed something, satisfying. Hmm. You know, because you set an intention and you do that task and it's all done within five minutes. And then it it can feel tranquil because you're putting your focus on one thing, but it's not like burning laser focus, you know? Mm. And it turns into soft focus. Yes, it turns into soft focus. Um, And then transcendent in the sense that when you sometimes when i'm doing dua at the end of namaz like it's like i'm in a you know meditative state and things will just come spontaneously out of like you know something maybe something i'm asking for or something that i'm not asking for but i have to do like literally the other day two days ago when i was doing namaz i was doing my dua my dad had asked me a few days ago to email someone about something and I completely forgot. Like it wasn't even in my mind. I was doing dua and I was like talking about my dad specifically, asking for his health and whatever, whatever, as you do. And then that thing just came to my head. So yeah, it, pr- it provides that clarity for then for you to sort of go up a level. Does that make sense? If I, if I take Definitely. to, if I'm not explaining things right, please feel free to jump in and I will don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think there's definitely this crossover between meditation and the Mars. Um, obviously, meditation has loads of different forms, mm-hmm. and people will say prayer is a form of meditation. Um, but also, even I think people do get caught up in life quite a lot, and that's mm-hmm. why, like the Mars, one of the reasons the Mars exists is because it's for people to pause and just think and let background thoughts seep in. Like if you're looking at it almost like biologically, like letting the subconscious thoughts 
feed into the conscious it's, you know, it's what we do when we sleep like that's why sleep is so important as well and i feel like meditation on the mars and these kind of holistic like practices are this kind of in between of the conscious like work 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 driven life and just pure rest um which, which would be sleep it's like you know i get i get so many of my best ideas in the shower because yeah <laughs> i've not got anything else going on like i'm just in the shower just thinking and then i'll have a similar thing like either i'll have an idea like oh i could do this you know this is a great idea that's really creative or like a solution to something or like you say you know my mom, my mom could have said like oh you need to <laughs> take the bins out or something i'll be in the shower yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. and then quickly just try and finish my shower off and get the bins out um, exactly when you, it's when you allow yourself to pause right things come up and i, I think one other thing about namaz is that it literally grounds you you know you're forced there's, there's something in an act of taking you know your shoes off and you could be in socks or barefoot um connecting to the ground on on many different levels so your feet touch the ground your knees touch the ground and your forehead and nose and your hand your palms touch the ground too all at different times and it, there's there's something in that you know um connecting and folding yourself and sort of like connecting with the ground that ends up grounding you yeah and sort of like you know yeah. tells you to pause yeah so grounded mm. grounded is another word i just yeah i think there's this when we think about grounding especially in the context of acts as well there's this kind of idea of like oh to be grounded you need to be stood really straight and still and like it's very much just do this and you will be grounded Whereas mm-hmm. I think what Namaz allows us to do is take this roundabout approach to it, where it's like you're doing something else that's completely unrelated, and then all of a sudden you just feel so much more grounded and so much more present. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you spoke a bit about what prayer offers you. What do you offer prayer? M- myself. You know, that there's no, and, and like myself at that moment, I think uh, when I was younger, um, sometimes, we, you know, when we pray, and it can often be when we pray with other people, um, if there's like three or four of us only, it, it can become a bit performative, you know, um, which it shouldn't be. And maybe I'm just, maybe it's just me, but you know, you don't fully allow yourself to surrender to the act of namaz um, because there's this external stimuli going on or whatever. Um, you know, like, like if you're praying, for example, and there's this kid running around the mosque, like slapping everyone's, the back of everyone's <laughs> knees, which, which like happens, you know, it's hard to pull focus. But I think prayer is at its best or you are at your best when you offer yourself to namaz because at the end of the day it's a supplication and it's a it's it's a gateway and a conversation i believe to that higher power you know um so offering off i offer myself and i try and offer myself as much as i can and and that that's allowing myself to sort of feel feel the weight of the words sometimes when, when we recite it's very easy to just because we recite arabic um and it's super easy to just you know say the words boom, 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 boom. but then you know my, my grand spent time with us so that we knew the meanings of what we recite uh and at the end of the day it's poetry as well and there have been times in my life you know going through some personal difficulties things like loss and stuff where you pray and then you sort of realize the weight of the words you're saying. And I used to hear this all the time from friends, from uncles, where, you know, they just sort of like break down or get a bit emotional or overwhelmed whilst praying. Mm-hmm. And I, that never really happened to me. But when you, when you offer yourself and you, you surrender yourself to the namaz and all it encapsulates, then, yeah, that's, I think that's the only thing you can offer. If that makes sense. Yeah, there. That's a really nice answer. 
um, you spoke a bit about public solitude, was it? Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, pub I think public solitude, and now I can only think of it as an, in an acting sense. So like, it's a Meisner thing, and it's like the act of public solitude. So if, if you're completing a task and you're completing it in, a, in front of a room full of people, but you wouldn't watching. So say, for example, if I was polishing a spoon, right? And there's like 10 people watching me. You wouldn't think that I was aware of 10 people watching me, right? Or pu sorry, public solitude is when, in, is when you become so engrossed and honed into the task that you lose awareness of the people viewing you. You know, you are, you are in doing this task and you are in solitude with that task. It's like a, this little square around you yeah. and you're just doing that, you know? So I think the Mars is, is in the same vein. Um, oftentimes, you know, now it's just me in my room and stuff, but if I'm praying with other people or before shows, I tend to like run through a couple like prayers um, when I'm walking about the space. And that's a form of public solitude. Like I'm doing it and I'm, I, you know, I lose awareness of what I not lose awareness. It's just like, I'm doing this thing and nothing else can sort of entreat that. Yeah. I think it links back to that grounding as well then, because you just, it's just you and the space you're in. There's no external yeah. stimulus. Yeah. Yeah. I think that crops up in a lot of different practices as well like just speaking from experience in sport you get athletes saying when it's crunch time like when it's when they're in that moment i use the word performing yeah they don't they aren't aware of the massive crowd they aren't aware of the cameras the lights the coach the whatever it's just them and the other person and the task whatever they're doing like we we had this in tournaments as well when um there was one tournament we played in Sheffield where this guy was in a singles match, guy on our team, and it was the furthest that we'd got in the competition. And we were in the sidelines just screaming and shouting and like cheering him on and um, like trying to be funny as well. We were cracking jokes and he came off and we were like, oh, did you hear this? Did you hear that? And he was like, no, I didn't hear any of it. We were like, what? We like, we're being so loud. And he's like, no, like, he said for him in that moment, it's just him, that other player on the court, like, that was it. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's an example of this like public solitude. I think when, you, when you're really in a moment, when you're really engrossed in what you're doing, um, it becomes, you forget everything else. And I think that is really important, really useful for an actor. Definitely. And it's like, it's like that tunnel vision, right? Like there's a time for it and there's a time not for it. Like, mm. but if you're in that, like your mate or like, you know, when we're doing the Mars or when we're doing a task, if you have that tunnel vision, you are way more likely to come out the other side of that tunnel. Whereas if you open up your vision and you see all the, the rocks and, and the water and whatever, and the pipes on the side, like you'll be there for longer. Yeah. And there's, there's a time and place to be there for longer. And then there's a time and place where you want to get through. Mm. Yeah. I guess it depends if you're trying to be still or trying to move. Mm. That's an interesting like, dynamic. For me, if I was trying to move, I want that tunnel vision because I want to know where I'm going and I want to be driving towards that goal. Whereas mm. if I'm just trying to be still, I don't want to be looking one way. I want to be taking in everything around me and be completely present in that place where I am. Yeah, but I think it's you with that analogy. I think Namaz is the sort of midway because, mm. like, y you are moving, but you're not moving. Like you're just you're in that same. I don't know. You don't move forward physically in a sense. Yeah. Um, and yes, in the sense that it's t it's focused because you're focusing on you know, the spot where you're looking at and, and the words that you're saying, but then you're also 
you have to be open to take in all the immaterial things around you that surround you that are going on within yeah. you and around you so I, I think stuff like prayer is that weird midway and that's where like spirituality and all that sort of stuff like falls in where it's like the material and immaterial and going forward but staying staying stationary while going forward weird mm. weird concepts and weird imagery to think about but like it when you have something it'd, it'd be interesting if, if we were talking if we were having this conversation with someone who is like uh doesn't have a faith and doesn't practice any spirituality things right because all this the imagery that we were just talking about might not make sense but because we have a thing that we can turn to where all that stuff sort of clicks yeah i do i find that interesting but i think yeah prayer can be that midway hmm. yeah and i mean i just use the analogy of sport i think you don't have to have a faith to feel to understand those things and mm -hmm. I think everyone has a thing, whether that is just meditation or um, whatever, like some sort of practice. Like I think for some people, it could ju it's just be like the gym. Yeah. Like being in the gym, being in one spot, but you're moving, but mm. your mind is doing backflips. You know, your mind is like <laughs> somewhere else. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, th I think it's important for everyone to have a practice like that yeah definitely I th yeah I think you're right um that leads me on to one of the other questions which is so you spoke about being in one place when you're praying yeah but you're moving because you're doing the, the movement of um in the Mars mm -hmm. why do you think those movements exist and you might have answered it already but why do you think there is movement involved in prayer? I don't know the specific reason. What comes into my mind is like my, my dad says it all the time. And my dad like like doesn't pray a lot, right? right. <laughs> like um, he's Muslim and he, he's, you know, practicing and stuff. Um, but we have to like get him to do it, you know? the prayers and stuff but he he's said on a number of occasions he's like you know why do you think we we do namaz the way we do it circulates the blood it it gets us moving it's exercise it gets us to you know flex our joints and and everything like that and that's the only reason that comes to that springs to mind uh immediately is that it's it's a form of exercise in a way it gets your blood flowing and circulating and all that sort of stuff. And I've not read into it, but I think there's a thing of like, you know, putting your head to the ground and, and being like sort of um, with your back and sort of stuff elevated and your head lowered. Yeah. That does something like a rush of blood to the head. Yeah. Um, not on like a mental scale, obviously, but um, yeah. So I think, you know, from a physiological point of view, there's that. And then also, if there's like a set form of movement, then it's easier for your subconscious or, or your mind to allow your subconscious in, uh, into your sort of the front of your, forefront of your mind. If you're, you know, not like a zombie, but if you're doing these things like in a flow state, um, which these movements can be done because if you do it five times a day or if you've been doing it since you're like 10 years old or whatever they come like second nature to you so when you're doing that it's easier for for you to sort of like not tense up for you to relax and that's everything your body and your mind so then it allows all these things to come in but I could be you... totally wrong <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is a right answer I don't think anyone yeah could i'd see that um do you think there's something about ritual and familiarity in prayer yeah R ritual was definitely the word i was looking for when i was going on that <laughs> long ass explanation um ritual so your question was do you think there's something in ritual and familiarity in prayer yeah and does that 
offer you anything? And you can say no. <laughs> no, I, I think it, there is. Like the ritual stuff, I think I sort of touched on with the movement. Um, but familiarity, for me, it's like, I, I sometimes remember okay, where, where, I remember where I learned to pray. I remember some of the first times I prayed. And it's that, and, and for me, it's, it's connected to family. It's connected to my mom and my nanny, so my, my grandma. Um, and those are, you know, those are the earliest memories of prayer and learning how to pray for me. So it feels like when I pray, like I'm connecting to those things too. And I, it would be interesting. Like, I, I wonder how, how I would connect to it if I learned in like a class of 20 in some Islamic school where I didn't really like the teacher. Yeah, you know? that is really interesting. Like it's yeah. an extra, I feel like it's extra special for me. Not to say it's not special for everyone else, but that, that's my connection to it. It's very within, um, yeah, my family. Mm. Like I don't see prayer as anything academic, which I know is ironic because I'm <laughs> writing an essay on it. But for me, it's not, it's nothing, it's not academic at all. No, um, but I can see how for some people it would be because they learned it in a class, mm. which I think lets them access a whole nother world of Islam that for me is much further away. Yeah, like for me, it's definitely something I associate with my family as well, the same as you. Yeah, um, generally, does namaz affect your acting in any way? And this could be a direct or indirect link. There, there are direct and indirect links. So the direct links uh, from the Mars to acting would definitely be like, I can't do a show. I don't think I've ever done a show where I haven't like recited the three calls beforehand and a little dua. So the three calls are like three short um, bits of the Quran, three short poems from the Quran. Um, and then, yeah, do a little dua. Um, and then like blow all over myself before yeah. I like, <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, Cause the t-shirt, because everyone knows the t-shirt blocks prayer. Like t-shirt, yeah, it, it does it can't 100%. penetrate. You have to, you have to lift it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's directly. It just it feels like, you know, some, in the way that some people would do, like a ten minute body scan or a meditation or something like that. For me, mm -hmm. that's what I do. Um, it's sort of in, in like, and I, I tend to use this word, but like out of fear, because if I don't do it, just everything's going to go wrong. It's that thing of rituals. What, again, it's like why yeah. people wear uh, their team's football shirt when they're playing or whatever, or why they don't wear the team's football shirt when the team's playing. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. If I don't do it, you know, it used to be that I had to like recite, when we were doing Never Swim Alone at uni, I had to, and all the way up until conspiracy. So this was like, up until August 2019, I would have to run through all of my lines in the show, in my head, before I started the show. And then I realized like that's just so much wasted energy. Mm. But yeah, direct link, definitely doing that before the show. Um, it gets me in the right mood. It, do you know what it does? It, yeah, it let, lets me feel protected or whatever, but it lets me leave myself at the end of that so that once i've done that i know everything everything that azan needs to do is done now and so then as soon as that happens then i can start getting into the mind of the character and the show and and serving that after i've served myself then i can offer myself to this space nice yeah um and then in terms of like indirect I, I don't know where with this influence i don't know where it was namaz or where it was actor training but like the staying um staying loose mm. this is that thing of like not having your knees locked i think that might be acting into namaz but um yeah definitely there's like there's this staying loose thing and not being super stiff that i get from namaz as well as acting and they both influence but then also like the whole staying 
grounded and present thing. You know, someone, someone way smarter than me said, acting is putting your attention on your intention without any tension. I'll do that again when I pronounce more T's. Um, <laughs> acting is putting your attention on your intention without any tension. And that's acting. And me, yeah, but that's yeah. also come definitely namaz. Yeah, exactly. I, in fact, I yeah. Is Probably because the conversation we was having, I was thinking namaz is my first example when you say that. Like that that is what right? for me namaz is, yeah. And and because I've been doing that before I was acting, it helps me sort of st- stay gra- stay focused on the thing. So what's my intention? And it lets me put my attention to it. And because I'm relaxed, because there's that ritual, that flow state movement, there's no tension. And other times, sorry, this is a long answer, but when I'm doing like, like my dusty, right? I tend to do it like, like on the ground here. And then my window, my curtains are normally open, right? And right in my garden, I've got like trees and whatever. And when I'm doing the dusty, um, the first word you sort of recount is subhanallah, mm. which I think, and I could be getting it wrong, is like something to do with like the magnificence of God. Um, and I tend to look out my window when I'm doing that to remind myself of like what's around me. You know, how, how many times do we actually look out the window, probably loads in lockdown, and just be like, damn, those trees are bare nice, you know, mm. or like nature, damn, you know what I mean? So it forces, it, not forces, it allows me to sort of pause and scan the environment around me. So then going into acting, it allows you to scan the room you're in. If you're doing a scene or whatever, or if, if, you, if it's direct address, which shows that I've done has been, it allows you to sort of have that soft focus of this is there. My attention is here, but I'm aware of what else is going on. Nice. Yeah. Do you have any other movement practices that you draw upon for your acting? This could be anything at all. Um, movement practices. Are you? <laughs> so are this you... this could be yeah, any, like anything from sport to like. It's just stretching to, you know, pr- like we've done prayer, but yeah, prayer, yeah. anything at all. Yeah, um, I, my, my friend who doesn't really go to the gym at all anymore, um, <laughs> when we were in like secondary school, was like, and we were doing Greece, right? It was like the first thing, the first play I ever did. And he was like, yeah, man, you, you've got to do like 10 press ups before you go on stage, like get your blood pumping. I'm like, okay, yeah, man, cool, cool, cool. So like, there was a period of time, and I think I stopped it. Like, I don't know, I actually don't think I've stopped it. I still do it. Like I have to do 10 press ups before I, uh, at some point before the show. It usually comes before I do the, the, the dua and the three calls. I've done 10 press ups, you know. Um, See where your priorities lie, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's going to come first? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't get the games in first. You know? um, but yeah, stretching, definitely. Stretching, oh my God, it's a big one. Um, something I only sort of started doing. Uh, after third year, I did that thing with Bryce, the actor's voice. Mm. And, um, a lot of the teachings that he taught was Christine Linklater, um, sort of actor voice, actor body relationship, opening up the body so that your voice is open, so that everything is warm. Um, I, I know you know that I, I have a background in martial arts. Um, and for me, doing some of those movements or like, unconventional so I have a background in martial arts and um, parkour Uh, so doing some of those unconventional stretches and movements open me up open my body up send tingles down there like all around my body and then also open my mind up because I'm not moving in I'm not stretching in the way everyone is stretching yeah yeah Um, so there's a bunch I move a lot I, I probably I'm not an I'm an annoying person to be around before a show because I'm just, like I'm muttering things to myself and I'm moving all the time. I probably sound like a crazy person. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so looking at martial arts, you are you trained in a specific martial arts? In a specific martial arts? Um, there's a couple, uh, but none to like like bad man le like master level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so like uh, I think I've spent the most time doing Wing Chun, Wing Chun Kung Fu. Um, okay. and that in itself is very like grounding like you, you you sit in a sort of not a horse stance but like a squat with your knees slightly in mm. um while you do the forms and stuff and your arms are moving and your waist is moving and all that sort of stuff um so there's that i spent a lot of my like early teens doing that and then recently it's been more muay thai um yeah, Muay Thai and, and kickboxing. Okay. Because looking at martial arts, I know meditation and mindfulness often go hand in hand yeah. with a lot of martial arts. And I'm wondering if you've ever experienced any of that or whether it has purely been a physical thing for you. No, a hundred percent. The the mental is is it just clear it can clear your mind, really can. But then, you know, doing that physical exertion, it's like you start to breathe new air, air, you know, when you're just sweating and, and you probably feel it with badminton or sport as well. Like it's just like a warmness, but it's like almost like you're you like you're burning, your body whole body is burning. Um but there's that flow state thing which comes from mindfulness and being super present you know you have to be i think like martial arts and acting go hand in hand as well but with the spirituality it's all contained it's all linked through the idea of being in the present right so if i'm doing like if, if i'm in like i'm sparring or whatever i've got this rhythm and i i've drilled these jabs and these hooks 50 times over the same way I've drilled lines over. But, you know, I have to be aware of the object of my attention, whatever it is. And I have to react to that. You have to be so alive and in the moment. And the, the key thing is with meditation and martial arts, you, you, have, to be, you have to be those things in both scenarios. One could easily could think it's easier to do that in a sort of active dynamic scenario, where it's like you're moving and stuff, and you know you have to react there, but, and it's easier to react because you're already moving. But in the same way, you have to train your mind. You, you, you can't. I don't think you could be a great boxer, kickboxer, if your mindfulness game isn't the same as your your physical actions, because when you're sitting there in meditation. You're allowing these things to come in. It, a lot of the time, like we, because I've only gotten to do meditation recently, but when I've spoken to people about it, like a cult leader, they've been like, "Oh, I, I can't, I can't really quiet my mind." And it's like, it is that, but it's not about that. You know, yeah. That that's like a lame excuse out of it, I think, or like a, just a naive way of looking at it. Because meditation for me is like, you sort of hone in, and you quiet everything down so that you can you surrender yourself to your mind it's like okay where 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 are you taking me today mm. and you you allow yourself to receive and yeah receive all those things yeah i think there's a attitude towards meditation which is of clearing your mind and trying to think of this whole thing like thinking of nothing which is impossible uh, maybe there's people who have like spent years and years trying to master it. You can do it, but that should, for me, that isn't the objective of prayer or meditation or anything like that to clear the mind. It's to actually let things in, not push things out. Exactly. Um, and yeah, what you said about the physical and the mental going hand in hand as well. I and mean, Ido Portal, who you actually showed me, um, mm. who is a movement practitioner um and was the movement coach for um conor mcgregor 
and does loads of stuff to do with movement. He said in the interview that he tries to spend as much time in stillness as he does in movement mm. and how you need one to actually truly understand the other, oh, yeah, um, yeah, which yeah. I thought was really interesting. And this um, triathlete I met as well, really randomly, um, said to me that growth is 50% work and 50% rest, uh-huh. which I think people forget as well. Like you need, again, one to truly gain the benefit of the other. Like if you're resting all the time, then obviously yeah. <laughs> like you're not going to have any growth. But if you're working yeah. all the time, then you're going to just damage your body and you're not going to have time to recover and rest. So Completely. I think there's something there in that dynamic that you could apply to, to prayer and having this kind of stillness and, you know, stopping and thinking to go hand in hand with the doing and the moving and the drive, drive, drive. It's that tunnel vision thing again. Yeah. Stillness is, yeah, that's such a useful way of thinking. And when, when I, when he sent me the questions, I was thinking, oh yeah, stillness, I'll definitely say that. And then obviously I didn't. Um, (laughs) Stillness is so, oh, I just love it. I I don't know if I just love the word because I studied English or I just love the idea of it. Um, and a lot of us have been forced, be forced to be still recently. But yeah, how can you, you know, how can you know where you're going if you don't stop to admire the journey that you've been on or admire like, or just observe what was happening around you? And then you don't, you know, if you don't do that, if you don't stop and observe the paths taken and the potential paths available, how are you going to, feel like you know which one is the best one to take and I think Namar sort of offers that to us Um, and it's a thing where like you can never master it that's the thing about stillness right you can never master it but and I, I guess with acting as well you can never master it it's always that thing of like oh yeah like I'm gonna you know, I'll get that job. When I get that job, then I know like I'm, I'm sick or I've made it or whatever. And then as soon as you get that job, you're like, okay, but what's next? You know, like I, I got cast in, in, in a national theatre show two years out, not even two years after you finishing uni, um, which was great, which was super, super amazing. I'm super grateful. As soon as I got it, I'm like, okay, cool. But like, what's the next one though? Like I'm going to be the lead, right? You're always chasing that next thing. And yeah. something with, with Namar is like, you're not chasing a next thing, but you just, you're just, you want to be better the next time you come to that map. Mm-hmm. The next time you engage in stillness, you want to engage in stillness in a more full way. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I think that chasing the next thing thing as well can be dangerous yeah like if you're always looking for the next thing Mm -hmm. then you're never going to be happy yeah and i think for me what namaz allows me to do is stop and actually say thank you for what i've got yeah before thinking about the next thing or whilst i'm thinking about the next thing um which is yeah completely so yeah. like with, with the Mars as well, like what I've started doing recently is like in, when I say thank you for all the stuff I'm grateful for, like I, I like I say how I'm grateful for the eyes that I see with, the ears that I hear with, mm. nose that I smell with, the mouth that I taste and speak with, you know, because we forget, we, we forget that these are, these are superpowers to mm. some people, you know, these, these, are, these are gifts and relating, you know, doing that sort of allows you to reassess what's important and what matters and what matters to you you know it's not the stuff the thing about namaz and even though it's within an organized religion like islam like i said before you bring yourself to namaz and namaz is is for you you know it's for you to to receive things and it's for you to send things out and i think stuff like the the mindfulness within namaz relates so much to acting because just doing that body scan of like 
okay, I'm grateful for these things, means that you, you become aware of these things. And then in an acting sense, but one, those are just your tools, you know, all these things that you've got. But then as well, you, you become aware of, of the things that make you a person. So then when you're trying to step into someone else's yeah. shoes or when you're in an environment, you know, you, you can have that sort of internalized focus and internalized awareness. It's all about being in stillness to let yourself be open. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Like j- just presence. Like for me, an actor who is truly present is an actor that is performing with their entire body. And that's because I'm a movement person. So yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the body. If you're there in prayer, thinking, saying thank you for the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, the everything, then when you're going to a situation where you're performing, you're going to have an awareness of those things because you have just said thank you for them. You, you've yeah. brought them things to your attention. Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of, you know, I, I don't say thank you for those things and I just take them for granted, which means that for me, yeah, they're not something that's present in my mind. I'm just a fan of slip, you know, yeah. I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, sorry you were saying. Um, yeah, but th- I, you know, there's obviously that benefit there. If you're saying thank you for it, you're bringing it into your conscious. You're, becoming aware of it which means that when you're performing you're going to be present and you're going to be aware of your entire body and not just your mouth that's saying the words and your hands are just doing gestures yeah you you know you, you offer yourself to the mat to pray to an um, jai namaz for namaz right you offer yourself to namaz in the same way you offer yourself to a stage to a rehearsal room that's when the magic happens Whatever magic that is, changes from day to day, from act to act. But that act of, that intention of offering yourself in service of something else is so inherently linked between nomads and, and acting, I feel. Yeah. Could someone who isn't religious reap the benefits of prayer or a similar spiritual practice? And we've touched on this already. But I'll tell you what you think. Yeah, man. Like things like meditation, like mindfulness. Um, yeah, like wellness culture is is doing rounds at the moment. Yeah. Um, and this is a conversation for another time. But like you know, wellness culture is a big fat W of whiteness attached to it that I feel about sometimes. Um, mm. Specifically recently, but yeah, hundred percent someone who has who isn't uh, following a religion can a thousand percent reap the benefits it's all about connecting yourself to yourself you know aligning yourself um and yeah things like meditation things like yoga meditation and yoga i think are, are, the, are the best gateways for it that i am yeah mm. yeah touching on that it, sorry they teach it in, like, in, in drama schools and, and uni and all that stuff. It's that lying on the floor stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it, that, that's, there was, um, I was really lucky to get a, a Zoom with someone who I really, really admire and respect acting-wise. I'm not going to say who it is. Um, and he was reminding us, the people on the Zoom, that like acting is, is such a spiritual thing. Um, and because we live in like such a secular world, which is great because everyone can be what they want to be, and that's amazing, but we forget how spiritual this this thing is, this art that we do is, because we take we we dive into ourselves and take something out of it, you know, or we connect to something in service of something else, and that's so spiritual. But we tend to focus on the mechanical or the material things of it. So doing the stuff like the yoga the breathing all that sort of stuff is so spiritual and so then how can you not say acting is goes hand in hand spirituality sorry yeah you i interrupted you um no actually links with that really well um which is this idea of the separation of the body and the soul or the body the mind and the soul and you said the big W being whiteness, but also I think the big W of the Western world, uh-huh. um, wanting the, the body and not the soul. 
wanting like the physical benefits with none of the spiritual stuff and you see it in yoga all the time Mm -hmm. do you think in namaz and in acting um there is this separation of body mind and soul and what do you think the kind of relationship is there do you think body in one could feed the soul in the other or body in one feeds body in another or whatever it's kind of it's quite an open question but i think they think? they feed each other all the time and i think when you're i don't want to say when you're doing it right but when it's serving you well is is when both all three things body mind and soul are like aligned if you imagine like the body is like you know a little bit to the left and the mind is to the you know right and the soul is like somewhere up here in the top right corner when you when you engage in those things namaz and acting and you engage in them present with presence those things align in a really like neat way in uniform way and they align and when they align then then you're just you you you're golden you know you, you this is energy and you're feeding off of it and it's that thing actors would be like oh i just don't know what happened or oh my god it just felt so amazing you know you know when you do a scene sometimes on set or on stage and something happens you're just like yeah it was good you know it's, it's when those things align i think i think there is a thing in western culture to wanting the body and not the soul you put it perfectly and i think stuff like namaz um, reminds us that we are for if for us for muslims you know um in islam it says that this world is a test and you know we believe in an afterlife and all that sort of stuff and the thing that carry that goes forth is your soul your body stays here when, when you're done you know your body stays here your soul carries on and you know because we we believe in that it's i for me it's easier to sort of feel like I'm engaging with that, you know? Mm. Yeah, I hope I answered it somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And feeding your soul as well, feeding your soul. Like, like you do certain things, certain things that give you your why, you know, that's what people call it, or your passion. And that could be sport, that could be acting, that could be accounting, not for me, but... Um, Something that feeds your soul. You know, there's that phrase, there's a reason that phrase is there because I think it goes back to that alignment. When when something is feeding your soul, that's when you know, that's when your, your body is loving doing it, your mind is loving doing it. And when those two things happen, then you're feeding your soul. Do you think the soul affects the way we move? Oh, oh man. I don't know, is the honest answer. Like my instinct was to go like, yeah, because like emotions and stuff, but then is that the mind, you know? But I think like, I think it does. I don't know how. I'd like to believe it does, but I don't know how. And I guess that's just like a whole, the whole thing with religion itself, right? I like to believe this stuff happens. I don't know, but yeah, it makes sense. Do make, making it make sense for me is, is feels nice. Mm. Yeah, I guess it links to what you're saying about feeding the soul. Like, if I do something that makes me happy, I'm gonna move differently. Like, I'm gonna be more relaxed, which means I'm gonna be, I'm literally gonna have less tension in my body. Like, I'm gonna move oh, differently. Yeah. Um, but Definitely. I don't know. I feel like it could go the other way as well. Like. If you're just sitting thinking and sitting in meditation all the time and not moving and not actually enacting it and embodying it mm. could it have like the reverse effect mm. like yeah like like because there's the thing of like you're doing all this soul work which is what some people call meditation and spiritual practice you're doing all the soul work but then you're not putting it into your body that means like it's just like is it just sitting within you or is it just evaporating into thin air? You know, like mm. if you're doing the soul work, I don't know, imagery comes to mind where like if, if you're doing the soul work, meditation on Mars, whatever, there's this like 
I don't know, call it a glow or an aura, right, within you or around you. And then if you don't put that, so if, like, I'm writing poetry and I do, like, the body scan or whatever beforehand, if I don't end up writing, then that the transfer of that energy isn't complete. It doesn't happen. So then where does the energy go? And then does then I get does your soul feel that that nothing happened? You know what I mean? And then that would affect your body and you know, just you cave in a bit more or you the opposite of when you're doing something you love. If you're not doing anything, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I see that. It's, I mean, it's a reason I will write down. I've started. I used to at uni. I used to type everything, uh-huh. and even though you're doing this, it's just not the same because it's like, it's so like digitized. Right, you just, put, just little movements on a keyboard. Right, it doesn't have that beauty yeah. of actually writing the words that are in yeah. your mind, and just the act of writing it by hand puts it into a movement. It puts it from like here into through your arm into a movement and. For me, that makes things stick so much more because I have a terrible memory <laughs> than, <laughs> than like typing them or just thinking about it. If I don't write something down, I will not remember it 100%. Yeah, it's that transfer of energy, right? Like you do this, this work for your mind and whatever and transferring it allows you and whatever you that is, if it's your, your mind, your soul, it allows you to let go of it. You know, so like recently mm. I've had a couple of rejections, which is standard in what we do. Um, and wellness culture, and another conversation, you know, sometimes it can just force you to be positive and this whole positivity, positivity thing of deflecting, which ends up deflecting all the emotions that you actually should be receiving, allowing yourself to receive. So anyway, I had um, this rejection. I actually saw you the day I found out about it. Um, yeah. and I was like, okay, let me sit in this for a bit. Let me sit in it and allow myself to feel what I have to feel. And then I got up and moved. Like I did something, like I cooked or something like that. And it allowed me to let that go. You know, you do the soul work, but if you don't engage with your body, then it's just a weird sort of thing that sits within you. Yeah. Does that make sense? You you have to let it go or transfer that work you do somewhere else. Yeah. I think there's something to gain from that as well. Like you're not gonna learn from something unless if you accept it and then act upon it. Yeah. That's the whole thing of, you know, like failure being a positive, like learning from your mistakes kind of thing, or learning from rejection or whatever yeah great that was um that was really interesting that was really really good i think that that's, that's it from me is there anything from you you want to bring up no, all good. i think this was yeah fascinating discussion man like mm. yeah really really glad we were able to do this i think i, I learned a lot about myself and about both of us yeah yeah me too it's like prayer itself just like time to stop and like just think yeah great thank you so much no thanks for having me man loved it yeah